My name is Jonathan Smith. I'm a solicitor and one of the uh, partners at Popleston Allen. I deal exclusively with uh, licensing work here and have worked here for coming up now to uh, 25 years. So a premises license is a permission which is granted by the local licensing authority which permits a premises uh, and all sorts of things can be premises including um, vessels, um, marquees, etc. to sell alcohol or to provide what's termed in the act as regulated entertainment or to provide late night refreshment which is the sale of hot food or hot drink after 11 o'clock. It is a, a fairly complicated process uh, involving completing application forms, submitting various documents to the licensing authority and then uh, displaying notice of application both on the premises and in the local newspaper. It is uh, quite a difficult process in particular where your premises are situated in what are commonly known as cumulative impact areas or cumulative impact zones where it can be difficult to secure a new license uh, because of the uh, number of licensed premises which are already in that area. Uh, that makes securing a license in those areas more difficult and consequently makes the value of any license granted in those areas uh, more valuable. A premises license can be held by a number of different uh, legal entities but the uh, most common are uh, either by an individual, sometimes by a partnership, so that's more than one individual working in partnership, but usually they're held by a uh, limited company. Yes, a premises license can lapse in a number of ways. If a premises license is held in the name of uh, an individual, then if that person um, becomes mentally incapable, or they die, uh, then the premises license lapses. If it's held by a partnership, that might be more than uh, two individuals, then there is some debate as to whether or not if one of the persons ceases to lack uh, mental uh, capacity or dies, whether the premises license then lapses. Some licensing authorities uh, take the rather draconian view that in the event that one uh, person dies or becomes mentally incapable, the premises license lapses. Uh, others uh, take the view it doesn't. If the premises license is held by a limited company then should that company be, uh, be dissolved or uh, becomes insolvent and the Act defines various forms of insolvency uh, then at that point it lapses. Uh, the third way a premises can, license can lapse is if it is surrendered by the premises license holder. So the person, individual or company, uh, the entity that holds the premises license decides that it simply doesn't want it anymore, then it can surrender the premises license to the licensing authority. And upon the surrender, it, it lapses uh, at that point. So in the event it lapses as a result of an individual becoming mentally incapable or dying, then it is open to um, uh, the uh, to specified persons to make an application for an interim authority which resurrects the license. Uh, in the event of a company that uh, goes into a form of insolvency or is dissolved, then again there are specified individuals in the Act, uh, being the supervisor say of, a, of an arrangement or an administrator who can apply for an interim authority which resurrects the license. If a license is surrendered then um, any person with a proprietary interest in the business or the property could apply to transfer uh, the license into their name. Um, as well as interim authorities, so if an individual becomes mentally incapable or passes away or um, a company goes into insolvency, uh, the other way to resurrect a license is within 28 days of the application, uh, sorry, 28 days of the event of insolvency or death or mental incapacity, uh, that the person with a proprietary interest in the property or uh, some other interest in the business applies to transfer that license. But whether it's a transfer which resurrects the license on it lapsing or whether it's an interim authority which resurrects it, there is only a period of 28 days from the event that has led to the license lapsing for which the application can be made. If it's not made within that 28 day period, 
the license has gone forever and an application would have to be made for a new premises license. Well, as I've said, if a limited company enters into, into administration, it is one of the forms of insolvency which under the Licensing Act 2003 would mean that all of the premises licences held by that company would automatically lapse and the administrator would either have to apply for an interim authority or alternatively, if it's administration, that normally means the businesses are still trading and therefore another trading company which is still running the businesses or, or a landlord, somebody with a proprietary interest uh, in the businesses could apply to transfer the license into their name. Upon doing so, that would then resurrect the licenses immediately. If you can plan it well enough with the administrators, it is possible prior to the administration to ensure uh, that the licenses are transferred to a group company within the group structure which isn't entering into a form of administration which would mean when the administrator is appointed over that company the licenses have already been transferred out of their name and therefore those licenses don't lapse but that does involve a degree of communication and planning prior to the appointment of the administration uh, administrator. It's fairly simple as it sounds, a shadow premises licence is, uh, is a shadow of the primary licence. There's a primary licence there held by a company, uh, often, or an individual, and um, landlords, those with a, a proprietary interest in the building, therefore in the licence itself, they have an interest in the licence, will apply for a licence in the same terms, subject to the same conditions and uh, with the same hours as the primary license. Uh, why would a landlord do that? Well, as I've said earlier, if your premises are in a, an area which is a cumulative impact area or subject to a cumulative impact zone, those licenses are very valuable. And what a landlord doesn't want to find is a tenant has surrendered a license or the license has lapsed uh, or has um, lapsed as a result of insolvency or death. And as a result of that, the premises license then uh, has gone and they've lost uh, the, vast, the vast majority of the value of that building. So a landlord would uh, often apply for a shadow license in their name to mirror the terms and the hours of the primary license. So in the event that that primary license uh, lapses due to an event of insolvency, death or mental incapacity, or the tenant tries to surrender it, their tenant tries to surrender it, the landlord falls back onto their shadow license and consequently um, the, there is still a lot of value in that building and they can transfer that shadow license to a new tenant. Well that really depends if it's a share deal, um, so if it's the shares of the company that holds the premises license that are passing as part of the, uh, the, the merger acquisition or private equity investment then uh, nothing happens as a result of that because the legal entity remains the same, it's just the shareholders that change. The only exception to that is in Scotland where if your controlling shareholder changes or your directors change then you do need to notify the board of that change. Uh, under the Licensing uh, Scotland Act 2005 but in England and Wales you wouldn't need to do anything. Um, you may find as a result of um, that merger acquisition or investment that the registered office may change and you need to advise the licensing authority of that. If it's not a share deal and it's the assets that are transferring as part of the deal uh, to a different company, then that would involve the transfer of a premises license from one legal entity that holds the premises license to the new legal entity that is acquiring the assets and consequently there would need to be a transfer of the premises license and the transfer of any licensed premises gaming machine permit for, for more than two AWP machines uh, or alternatively uh, if you only have two machines you need to issue a new notification as part of, uh, the, part of the process. So that's me on um, licenses that uh, lapse and the reason for them lapsing. So if you do have any questions about, uh, about what I've said or if you need any assistance then uh, please contact me uh, either by email on j.smith at uh, pop, Oscar Popper, a -L -L, alpha lima lima .co .uk, 
Or alternatively, you can uh, ring Mail My Mobile, which is 07768845695. That's 07768845695. Thank you for listening.